Now this fire actually started, we're told by witnesses here, actually an hour ago. Just heard a loud cry. George Zimmerman should not be charged. Trayvon! Trayvon! Seeing that was, it was crazy. I'm going to get school. I'm going to get school. And that was, sounded like execution. Why do you think they plagued you to do it? And the SWAT team kept residents back. We're out here trying to let Orlando know what's really going on with their food. The discussion of religion and faith resonates across the world, often centering around one question, does God exist? The believer. I absolutely believe that God exists. I know there's a God. The atheist. There's a lack of data. We can believe all we want, but we can never know. And the man who claims he has the answer. You can conclude from modern physics is that God exists. Dr. Frank Tipler is a mathematics professor at Tulane University. He says he's made a divine discovery. It is not possible to divorce theology from science without throwing out Christianity. Therefore, we have a simple, very straightforward proof of the existence of God. According to Tipler, that proof can be determined by the laws of physics and quantum mechanics. These equations, combined with this one, tell us that there has to be more than one universe. Tipler has come up with this equation. It's not understandable to most, but Tipler concludes the initial conditions of our universe and what made it happen is not due to chance. He uses this diagram to make his point, and when dozens of numbers and mathematical symbols add up across the board, he says it equals God. The singularity is outside of space and time and is the ultimate uncaused cause of everything. Therefore, the initial singularity is God. But not everyone is seeing the light. We invited a group of atheists to watch Tipler's presentation. I see this beauty, I see this intelligence, but I don't give it a name. I can't without data, without empirical evidence. So, uh, so I'm not going to fill in that blank where the answer belongs with God like Tipler does. You kind of need to see the, the end result. Something has to be there and we can kind of come up with arguments and proofs all we want but if we don't actually have you know God there what good does all of the proofs and the, you know, and the ideas come up with? Tipler was once an atheist himself and knows how hard it is to believe, but says after he found the numbers and the scriptures connected so perfectly, it was a match made in heaven, and he converted. My early, younger self, 40 years ago, would be astounded to find his name on that book. But I have been forced to do these conclusions by the mathematical consequences of the laws of physics. And other math experts are praising Tipler's findings. This would be the father this would be the Holy Spirit. Dr. Paul Simony is the head of the physics department at Jacksonville University. Although he says personally he has questions about some of the research, there is nothing blasphemous about Tipler's theory, and it all makes sense. Everything in here is correct, and that his interpretation of the, of the equation is correct. I don't think that you have proof. I think you have evidence. You will not have proof. In fact, the Bible clearly says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then it goes on to say the faith is the substance of things you hope for and the evidence of things that you can't see. And as long as the church bells continue to ring, there'll always be questions about faith. And while some believe God is no mystery, it's up to you to judge that for yourself. I didn't know it was that big, really. You can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't function. And then you just go back to trying to stay positive. 11-year-old Howard Darden IV is back home now, and he's happy to be spending time with his family and their dog, KJ. He walked in with the, with the foster family. Um, I hugged him. I said, I love you. And then I didn't say anything. I just held him. The 11-year-old was taken by his mother Tuesday morning. His father did not find out his son was safe until Thursday night. In between that time, young Howard ended up more than 700 miles away in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, in a yellow turned spray painted black Volkswagen Beetle. She didn't really want people seeing the car it was yellow, so we got a bunch of black spray paint and spray painted the whole car. 
it was it was kind of fun. It looked kind of ugly, but <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fun. The 11-year-old says his mother drove them to Georgia, back to Florida, then back to Georgia, and then to North Carolina. All the 11-year-old knew was they were going to see his grandmother in Virginia. But his father believes this had everything to do with a custody battle. He did what she did out of love. But like I said earlier, sometimes the best people can have the right intentions, they just go about it the wrong way. I kind of want to like see both, see, be, be with him sometimes and then my mom sometimes, but I'm with him now. But Angela Darden has been arrested and charged with grand theft and violating her pretrial conditions. It's likely she'll face other charges. So Howard and his younger brother may be in for a new reality, one with their mother in prison. It may be next week, it might be three years from now uh, on how he deals with it, but I just gotta take it uh, at his pace. In Altamont Springs, John W. Davis, News 13. We are getting our first look at this year's Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. News 13's Allison Walker was one of the select few to get inside the park and even inside the haunted mazes. We do want to warn you, some of this video may be too graphic for the little ones. You're looking at the all new Walking Dead Haunted Maze. A week and a half before Halloween Horror Nights even opens, Universal let us experience it early. All right, so this Haunted Maze is based on season three. Now I'm told, you gotta be on the lookout because these, because these uh, walkers can actually trap you anywhere from the town of Woodbury all the way to the claustrophobic prison. I don't know why they're making me do this again. <laughs> We got full access inside one of eight new haunted mazes. Now, if you're a fan of AMC's The Walking Dead, you will recognize what's going on in here and in between mazes. You're gonna see the tank from season one. You're gonna see a walker attack in the streets of New York. We're not duplicating anything with Walking Dead this year. It's a real good thing you don't have smell of vision because the scent of decay is not something you wanna whiff twice. Universal also revealed the costumes, even the masks from mazes like Cabin in the Woods and an American Werewolf in London. That's the maze the creative director says scares even him, all because of a wolf. It's a puppet that we've never had in a maze before, and the way it moves, the way it acts, it, it, it's, it's, you gotta see it to believe it. I honestly got scared by this thing, and, and we helped build it. Two of the houses are built inside tents versus sound stages, so will you be able to notice? Absolutely not. Five seconds left. Your favorite haunted maze is what? Favorite haunted maze is the one we're gonna do next year. <laughs> uh. In Orlando, I'm News 13's Allison Walker. Where you might expect sorrow, there was joy. Where you might expect tears, there was jubilation. This was not a funeral, but a home going for Joseph West. We celebrated his life. That was about, it was a young life cut off. Cousin Charles Harrington, along with nearly 100 family and friends, packed this small sanctuary to bury the eighth victim of the brutal Brunswick, Georgia murders. Those in attendance choosing not to dwell on the negativity surrounding West's death, but the positivity he brought forth during his life. Well, he's done things in his past, but he, I know for a fact he's a good guy, and everyone that knows him can say that Joseph was a good guy. Wearing shirts with his likeness, the church often laughed at the stories told about the man nicknamed Little Joe. In the audience were members of the Toller family who held funerals for the other seven victims just a week ago. I'm glad that they came out there because we celebrated with their family, their home going, and they came over with us, and it was a beautiful thing, you know, to show the love. Love is what family members say West even had for the man now in jail, accused of his murder and that of seven others, Guy Hines Jr. And all I can do is pray for that fellow, but that don't mean I have to like him, you know, and don't like the situation at all, but, you know. Yeah, unjust don't prosper. One of many prayers lifted up today as a community rocked by violence looks to heal. It's been, uh, what, what can we say, 10, 10 to 12 in the last month. You know, lives lost and violently, violently at that. So, you know, we can ask for you guys' prayers and to help our community come along strongly. In Brunswick, Georgia, Mike Tolbert, Fox News. Robert German, Jonathan Scott Pine. We certainly uh, never, ever forget uh, the officers we lost. These men 
were murdered. That's right. I said they were murdered in senseless acts that didn't have to happen. Attention all units and listening stations. May 7, 2015 is dedicated to honor all Orange County law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We've lost two really, really special people and, and members of our community and our family and, and all tragically murdered in the line of duty.